in this video, we're still talking about bootstrapping, and now we're going to do another example. So we looked at if we had like one mean, now we're going to look at a difference in means. So we're going back to the baby birth weight data, and now we're going to be looking at a predictor, a categorical predictor. So we have whether or not the mother smoked during pregnancy. So that is pretty well known to be tied to baby's birth weight. All right, so our goal is to find a, a confidence interval for the difference in the mean birth weights between babies whose mothers smoked during pregnancy and babies whose mothers did not smoke during pregnancy. So we're looking for that difference in means. All right, so we're going to do this by using bootstrapping. So a useful little piece of information is that our original sample had 1,009 babies. All right, so if we want to bootstrap, then we'll be needing to first start off by remembering that we had 1,009 babies. Then we're going to do this next thing a large number of times, maybe like 10,000 times. We're going to randomly select with replacement 1,009 observations from our original sample. And then using that resample, that randomly, um, those samples that we randomly selected with replacement, we're going to calculate X bar for the babies whose mothers did not smoke minus X bar for the babies whose mothers did smoke during pregnancy. Right, because if we're trying to get a confidence interval and a bootstrap distribution for mu non minus mu smoke, we know that our point estimator is x bar non minus x bar smoke. And so then we need to be calculating this over and over. So this is what we're going, this difference in means, that's what we're going to hold on to and store that for our bootstrap distribution. So we store that for later. And then once we've done that 10,000 or a huge number of times, then we can look at our bootstrap distribution. So we're looking at our bootstrap distribution for x bar non minus x bar smoke. So who knows what that looks like? Maybe something like this. And then if we wanted maybe a one minus alpha confidence interval, then we would look for this cutoff here so that we have alpha over two in the left tail, and then this cutoff here so that we have alpha over two in the upper tail. Or if we wanted to do this like more concretely, say we wanted a 90% level of confidence, then that leaves 10% left over for the two tails, and we're splitting that equally. So we'll have 5% in this tail and 5% in that tail. So we could use the quantile function in R to find the points that we have 0.05 in that tail and 0.05 in that tail as well.